Something was following him. He didn't know what, but something was following him. The young Mosasaurus couldn't see his pursuer, but he knew it was there, whether by some deeply ingrained instinct or by reading the subtle changes to the water around him. He knew something was closing in on him, and it wasn't friendly. Normally he would be amongst his family members, scouting out the shallow seas and reefs that they called home. However, he had gotten separated from them. This wasn't the first time. But now, despite being nearly fully grown, he did not feel safe in the gloom of the open seas. Whatever was out there was now beginning to circle, keeping its distance, for now. In the deep blue waters that surrounded the Mosasaurus, a shark was closing in. Though from a distance it looked similar to a modern large shark, it was anything but. The colossal predator, called Cretoxyrhina, was eight meters long and weighed five tons. He feeds on anything in the ocean, from the smallest fish to the largest marine reptiles, even if they are just as capable of feeding on his own kind in turn. No predator truly stood at the top of the food chain in these waters. To attack a mosasaur, however, was quite rare even for a shark of his size. However, the reptile he had in his sights wasn't near its pack and wasn't fully grown, and therefore was a potential meal, if not a risky one. The massive shark began to swim more silently and descended. It was gone. All of a sudden, all signs of the creature that had been following him had vanished. The Mosasaur looked in all directions and tasted the water with his tongue, but couldn't pick up anything. He felt relieved. Perhaps whatever it was had considered him too difficult to hunt. He rose to the surface to take a breath of air. As he broke above the calm ocean, he saw a flock of flying pterosaurs gliding through the air, keeping just out of reach of his powerful jaws. Before he could submerge again, he felt a disturbance in the water below him. The reptile pulled his head underwater and swung from side to side, looking for his attacker. Too late, he realized it was coming from directly below him, and coming up fast. As the Mosasaur looked down, he saw a maw of sharp, serrated teeth. The Cretoxy Rhino burst upwards at astonishing speed and slammed into the Mosasaurus's side with such force that both of them burst out of the water. The startled pterosaur seen firsthand the sight of a massive shark binding down on the young mosasaur's stomach before both of them came crashing back into the water. The reptile's thick armor provided some resistance to the shark's teeth. The flesh underneath did not. With a few rapid shakes of the Cretoxyrhinus head, the shark pulled away a chunk of the mosasaurus's midsection and a mass of blood spilled into the clear water. Not realizing his injuries, the victim swam as quickly as he could but didn't get far till his body realized that he had been leaving behind some of his internal organs, which now drifted in his wake. Shock set in soon after, and the young reptile's life ebbed away. The Cretoxy rhino was now free to feed at his leisure. Already the scent of blood was attracting creatures of all forms from the nearby reef, including smaller species of shark. They would have to wait, however. Just because the Cretoxy rhino was feeding, didn't mean he wouldn't eat anything that got too close. Hello everyone and welcome back to the show. Today we will be covering one of the largest sharks ever to terrorize the ocean, Cretoxyrhina. Cretoxyrhina was a large species of shark distantly related to modern great whites. It is estimated to have grown up to 8 meters long and weighed up to 5 tons. It lived from 107 to 73 million years ago in the late Cretaceous period. It is sometimes referred to as the Ginsu shark, after the Ginsu brand of knives because of the sharpness of its teeth. Cretoxyrhina is a well-documented species, as many fossils have been found around the world, including a few well-preserved, nearly complete skeletons. These include stomach contents and unique finds like when a tooth of a Cretoxyrhina was found in the neck vertebrae of a pterosaur. Although it may have visually looked similar to a modern-day Great White, Cretoxyrhina would have been much faster, potentially having a burst speed of up to 70 km per hour, matching today's fastest shark, the Mako. Its size, speed and power would have made it a top predator of the oceans. Adults would have competed with the other apex predators of the time, 
all trying to eat each other while trying not to get eaten themselves. Known marine megafauna that it ate included mosasaurs, plesiosaurs, pterosaurs, other sharks, massive predatory fish, and turtles. It is even known to have fed on dinosaurs, though these were most likely already deceased animals that Critoxyrhina scavenged. The oceans of the time of the dinosaurs were some of the most diverse and violent that the planet has ever seen, and at the top of the food chain we see the sharks. Different species of sharks have been top predators long before the dinosaurs or marine reptiles, and have continued right up to the modern day. Critoxyrhina seems to fill a role that modern day sharks do. Species like great whites, tiger sharks and hammerheads are only outdone by killer whales for the role of top predator. Critoxyrhina was in a similar place, only outclassed by some massive mosasaurs like Tylosaurus. This may also be why they died out. Competition from the larger marine reptiles may have driven them out. That and the disappearance of the western interior seaway that covered North America at the time. Evolution does not have an end goal or a single path. It is at its simplest, survival of the fittest. Those who have the best traits to survive in the moment will survive and pass on their genes. If something isn't broken, there is no need to fix it. This in part is why the sharks have survived for over 450 million years, making them older than trees and surviving four of the five mass extinctions in history. Their body plan has assured them a multitude of places throughout prehistory from bottom feeders to apex predators. Yet in modern times, this ancient lineage is threatened. Over the past few decades, shark populations have plummeted because of human activity. So, I will take this moment to ask that in the future, we take better care of our oceans and try to make sure that these important species don't end up like Cretoxyrhina. With that, thank you all for watching. And what do you think of Cretoxyrhina? Does it activate that primal fear of being swallowed whole? Or are you impressed by the fact that it was able to carve out a niche in an ocean full of super predators? Until next time, what lesser known species do you want me to cover in a future episode? Until then, see ya!